Secrets of the Sea, the story of Jean Power, revolutionary marine scientist. Jean curled her toes in the sand and gazed out across the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. Gentle waves crashed the shore, a salty breeze whooshed like a whispered secret. It was her first day in Sicily. A large island off the coast of Italy, Sicily was nothing like the tiny village in France where Jean had grown up. It was also a big change from the bustling Paris where she had worked as a seamstress. Jean could sew anything. She had once designed a wedding gown for an Italian princess. But when she married a merchant and moved to Sicily, she decided to leave dressmaking behind and try something new. What would she do? Who would she become? Jean explored the island. She saw wild olive trees and cypresses swaying in the breeze, falcons and eagles soaring overhead, hares scampering over grassy hills, and porcupines foraging among the bushes. Sometimes when she looked out to sea, she caught a glimpse of a breaching whale or a leaping swordfish. Sicily was buzzing with life. It gave Jean a wild idea. She would become a naturalist, a kind of scientist who studies animals and plants. The year was 1818. Women weren't encouraged to be scientists, but Jean didn't let that stop her. She taught herself about natural history by reading books and talking to other scientists on the island. Then she got to work. She walked all over Sicily with a journal in hand, jotting notes about every interesting animal and plant she found, and sketching many of them too. She even brought new friends back to her house to observe up close, including two martins and a tortoise. But Jean wasn't content to study only land animals. Every day, the sea breeze whispered in her ear and her eyes turned to the Mediterranean. She wanted to learn about the animals that swam beneath the waves. She wanted to uncover the secrets of the sea. But how could Jean study animals that live where humans can't even breathe? Other naturalists studied the preserved bodies of dead sea creatures, but Jean wanted to study the sea creatures as they lived. She wanted to meet them face to face. She wanted to see how they moved through the water how they interacted with one another, how they grew and changed over time. She put her mind to work. Maybe a tank would do the trick, she thought. A large tank made of clear glass filled with salt water so animals could swim inside. That way she could study the live sea creatures in her own home. Jean didn't know where to find such a tank. So she made one herself. It wasn't so different from creating a dress. First, there was an image in her head. Then she turned the image into a design. Finally, the design became a new object, an aquarium. It was one of the world's first aquariums built for scientific study. And Jean didn't stop there. She also designed wooden cages that could be anchored in shallow water, allowing her to observe animals in their natural habitat. She had her equipment. Now all she needed were sea creatures to study. The fishermen waved to Jean when she hurried down to the port. She visited them every day in search of animals for her tanks and cages, and they saved interesting sea creatures for her in buckets of salt water. The fishermen didn't see anything special about a bunch of weird looking animals, but Jean did. She gazed eagerly into each bucket as though it were a treasure chest. With her aquariums and a steady supply of animals from the port, Jean was finally ready to study marine life. Jean studied many creatures from seahorses to sea stars, but her favorite was the paper nautilus, a small octopus that lives inside a thin white shell. 
Jean loved the rich colors of the paper nautilus. She loved the graceful way it sails through the water. With her aquariums, she was able to do something no one had ever done before. Observe this enchanting octopus alive and up close. And this careful study gave her the chance to solve a mystery that had puzzled scientists for ages. When scientists can't agree on something, they like to argue. And they had been arguing for a long time about whether the paper nautilus created its shell or stole it from another animal. Jean knew that she could use her aquariums to settle this argument once and for all. She placed paper nautilus eggs inside a tank. Now she just had to wait for them to hatch. She pressed her face against the aquarium glass and waited day after day. Until the baby octopuses emerged. At first, there were no signs of shells. Maybe paper nautiluses steal their shells after all, Jean thought. But to be sure, she kept watching. Then finally she saw them, tiny shells, just starting to take shape. Jean's heart leaped. She had solved the mystery of the paper nautilus. It didn't steal another animal shell. It created one of its own. Jean spent several years studying sea creatures in Sicily and she made many discoveries. She witnessed the paper nautilus repairing cracks in its shell, which further proved that the shell was created not stolen. She observed octopuses holding stones with their tentacles and using them as tools. She uncovered sea snail and clam fossils buried in the Sicilian sand. When she presented her findings at a nearby academy, a place where people gathered to discuss science and share their research, her fellow scientists were impressed and Jean became the academy's first female member. Jean knew that her work was groundbreaking and she wanted to present it to academies beyond Sicily too. When she and her husband left Sicily to move to England, she had a wealth of research just waiting to be shared with the wider world. But during the move, disaster struck. Jean traveled by land, but she sent her belongings, including much of her research, by boat. Along the coast of France, the boat ran into a terrible storm and sank. When Jean heard the news, her heart sank too. Most of her work was lost to the bottom of the sea, deep down where the octopuses dwell. How would she share her discoveries with other scientists now? Without her research, who would believe her? Jean didn't give up. She returned to Sicily, rolled up her sleeves, and went back to work. She repeated her experiments. She published her research so others could read it. She shared her findings with a prestigious scientific academy in London. At first, many people doubted Jean. They distrusted a female scientist and they refused to believe that the paper Nautilus created its shell. But Jean's work was careful, detailed, precise. When she presented her evidence, it left no room for doubt. Slowly, the world began to accept the truth of her discoveries. It was never an easy road, but Jean stood her ground at every turn. When a male scientist tried to take credit for solving the mystery of the paper Nautilus, Jean spoke out, reminding the scientific community that it was her discovery. Later, when the world began to forget Jean's contributions to aquarium design, she put pen to paper. As I was the first to have the idea to study marine animals in aquariums and cages, I want to keep my rights as an inventor, she wrote in a letter to Richard Owen, an influential fellow scientist. Jean joined many scientific academies throughout her life, a rare feat for a woman in the 19th century. Her research was published in several languages and she earned the respect of her peers. The respect wasn't just for her discovery that the paper Nautilus creates its shell. With her aquariums, Jean paved the way for the study of living sea creatures. She brought humans and the sea closer together than ever before. 
As Jean grew old, her thoughts never strayed far from the sea. Wherever she was, she could close her eyes and picture the deep blue of the Mediterranean. She could hear the gentle waves lapping the shore. She could smell the salt-tinged breeze. She had unlocked some of the secrets of the sea, but she knew there were many more just waiting to be revealed by other curious minds. Others who looked out to the sea and dared to wonder, to explore, to discover. The end.